Thank you for that update. Right now, we're going to welcome our next live guest. We've got Adam Perlmutter with us from Metaphora. If you caught our Metaphora segment last week with Ryan Schreiber, we were talking a little bit about training and why it's so important to keep your employees happy. Today, Adam, we're going to talk a little bit, little bit about the new hire training, which seems like it should be a no-brainer, right? You're new to an, orga an organization. That should be the first thing that you do is get trained. Yeah, super important topic. Uh, as you mentioned, it, it, it seems pretty obvious, but oftentimes people don't necessarily think about the why it's so important. Um, so very excited to be here talking to you guys about it today. Yeah, Adam, hey, welcome to the show. It, it is an interesting topic because back in the day when I was trained, I went through a very, very good training at, Ro at Roadway Express, but it was also very self driven and that was the purpose of it so it's got to be purposeful training right and not this uh well just sit down with this person for a week and see what they do totally you hit it spot on so new hire training really sets the tone uh for the rest of the employee's time with the firm it's the first chance the company has to set expectations for responsibility performance company values and general rules of engagement mm -hmm. when you think about it like Think about any time, any job that you've had in the past, you just brought up your experience. Uh, and then think about the training that you receive. There's like a very strong correlation between your overall experience with the company and the quality of the training that you received. Were you set up for success? Did you know what was expected of you? Did you have the right tools and did you know how to use them? The things, these things seem like pretty intuitive, but can easily get lost in the shuffle and a figure it out, solve the problem that's right in front of you type of industry. Absolutely. And training is sometimes something that, especially in an industry that's as fast paced as freight is, it can kind of get thrown to the wayside, right? Especially if you come into a new role with a decent amount of experience on your resume. A maybe not so good manager would take a look and say, ah, you've been doing, you've been a broker for 16 years. Cool. Well, you can just jump right in and take your time and you can take it away with it, right? I don't have to train you. But that's not the case because every brokerage is different. Just using brokerage as an example, every company is different. Everybody's expectations are different and every process is different. So maybe if you're in that management position, how do you get over that fact of just saying, because just because you have experience doesn't mean that you don't need to be trained? Yeah, that's a great question. And oftentimes there's a lot of burden on management to be able to juggle that and figure out what's the right amount of training. Um, so it, what's important to consider is it doesn't always have to fall on management. There are other solutions out there to help you provide the right training to your folks. Um, but to your point, like everything is different. Every business is different. And what's crucial here is that you want to drive a consistent onboarding experience for all new hires, uh, regardless of how long they've been in the industry. Um, so that's super important just so that you're setting the expectation and also showing those people what best practice looks like uh, so that they can plug in uh, to your business, to your processes and uh, really do a good job. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting concept because uh, the structure of the training needs to be in such a way that it, it reflects what the job is going to be and what it entails. Like, Kaylee, what you said and what you referred to as this as this fast paced and, and you said as well, Adam, solve that problem in front of you right at this particular moment. Right. That needs to be taken into consideration when you're training somebody because you want somebody to come out of the training successful. Uh, but you also want that person to match that job. And maybe it goes before that training as to which individuals you actually accept and not just take anybody who applies, right? But that training needs to be uh, towards the job that is there. So the style of training for a broker is not the same as somebody in collections or somebody in finance, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so a big pitfall that we see, like to your point, Michael, um, shadowing is key. You want to know exactly what's going into the role, but like, Oftentimes when someone sits with someone on the job to, to shadow what they're doing, that person isn't necessarily focused on training what's needed to be successful in the first two weeks, 30 days, 60 days, uh, whatever it is, they're focused in, on doing whatever's right in front of them. So like if they're putting out a fire right then and there, if they're addressing an RFP request, um, if they're handling like detention, that's the experience the person who's shadowing them, the new hire is going to take in. And that's not necessarily what's most important for their uh, for their mm -hmm. new hire training at that mm -hmm. point. So you again, you just have to make sure that the experience is consistent. When you're going to shadow with someone, make sure that the person who is conducting the shadowing session knows exactly what lessons they're supposed to be passing along to the new hire so that they're getting that critical information that they need to set them up for success in the long run.
So obviously training is unique on a company by company basis and a job by job basis like we've been talking about, but that doesn't necessarily mean that as a company you have to pour all of your resources in-house to having an in-house training department. Is it possible and when is it useful, I guess, to outsource some of that training or to look at other types of sources for your training materials? Yeah, totally. That's a great point. Oftentimes, uh, people think they have to take care of it in-house, and oftentimes that increases the burden on middle management to sort of take on um, the responsibility of training new hires. So that's not always the case. Uh, you may not have the budget to hire a full-time L&D resource for training. You also may not need one. Uh, you could be hiring people, you know, one-off or a couple at a time rather than hiring a large, uh, a large training class on a recurring basis. Um, so like those are like cues that like, hey, a different solution might be right for you. Um, you definitely want to ensure that the new hires are being exposed to the right content that's meaning to your business. As we just mentioned before, with the shadowing example, you want to make sure that they're getting the right content that's contributing to their overall training experience. And again, I'm going to keep hitting on this. You want to drive the consistency uh, with the new hire experience. So everyone that comes out has a baseline foundational knowledge of what it's going to take to be uh, successful in their role and not just sort of like, oh, I, I didn't I didn't learn that yet or I didn't know like how to do this because I sat with someone and they were dealing with something else. Um, so these are all cues um, that, you know, you might want to look outside of your business for uh, help with your new hire training. And so this touches on new hire training, but what about continued training, continued education in your job? Regardless of if you're moving up in like position wise or taking promotions, there's always something new to learn. Everybody can always use a refresher on their expectations, right? How do you manage to both understand what new hires require, but also keep elevating your people internally and keep them trained up as things continue to grow in your business? And that's a great point. I'm really glad you brought that up. It's it's a common trend that we see that like people go through the new hire training uh, and then they're off in the world. They're producing. They might be doing a great job. They might not. Uh, but they're out there in that figure it out uh, world. And so what we see as being uh, super important to continue the growth and development for folks on your team is upskilling training and also management training. You know, oftentimes in our industry, people in middle management are those who excelled as individual contributors and then they're put into a management role um, where they don't have any experience managing people or delivering results through a team. So it's super important because it's a different skill set. There's different responsibilities. So first time manager training is a big deal that we'd feel like doesn't get talked about enough. Um, and I'm sure we're going to cover that on future uh, segments with Metaphor. I continue our whole campaign with training. Uh, yeah. But certainly, like, we think those are, those are super important as well to follow up the new hire training. Yeah, it's, it's incredibly important because, you know, the rule of given a hierarchy, a person will rise to their highest level of incompetency <laughs> unless, you're, unless you're very, very car careful about that. But the new hire training, right? You, you see a lot of cross-training in the new hire training, right? And it's meant to try and understand and be an onboarding type of thing. What is that proper mix with the new hire bringing them in there? Because you want them to be comfortable in their job, but comfortable with the company as well. Is there a, is there a magic uh, mixture of ingredients there? Sure, you wanna make sure that they're given proper exposure to other departments who they're gonna be working with. And they also want, you also want them to see the broader picture of what the company does so they can truly buy into the vision. So not necessarily things that, um, that operate in their day to day, but giving them the full picture of how the company operates, where they play, how they're going to win. Uh, I would recommend starting off with uh, introductory calls with leaders throughout the business or perhaps middle management throughout uh, the business in different departments to get sort of like a day in the life type of perspective of what else is going on outside of their seat, outside of their role, to give uh, those new hires a broad perspective of what the company does and how they fit in what they do uh, on the day to day uh, contributes to the, to the broader success of the business. Awesome, Adam. Well, thank you for taking the time to come on the show today. Of course, it's always great to have you guys from Metaphora here. We'll talk to you all next week to continue this series. Right now, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with another check of weather and a second look at the social roundabout.